Hey, come here, check it out. Take a look at what I posted on Twitter yesterday. So take a look at where price was when I posted. Take a look at my guess. See this gray line? I was pointing to the gray line with about 62.2 highlighted. Take, check it out. Take a look at what happened. Remember, I posted it here. Here's the same gray line. Kablam. So that is not why this video is important. Here is why this video is going to be important for you in terms of Bitcoin and Ethereum analysis, overall market analysis. It's because there are three typical ways, right? That Bitcoin reacts after hitting that gray line in terms of a recovery. So I wanna show you those three ways, but that's not even the most important thing. What the most important thing is, I'm gonna give you super simple tools that you can look at on your chart, you yourself without getting fancy, without ribbons, nothing like that. I almost burped. <laughs> without getting fancy, but I held it back. Without getting fancy, so you can have the tools to determine which of these three situations is most likely to play out and you'll be able to turn on a dime. So let's dive into it. All right, so we are going to go to the four hour chart. We're going to use normal EMAs, and I'm simply going to use two EMAs if I can refrain from drawing lines on my chart and uh, when I'm trying to actually drag it. All right, so I'm going to use the four hour 10 and 21 EMA, and these things are just magical, everybody. I mean, you, if you've never tuned in here before, you're getting ready to have a pretty cool lesson on most of my patrons um, link to that in the description section the private private gated community <laughs> um, link to that in the top near the top of the description section. Most of them know my theory on this and they know that this wick right here is my favorite type of counter trend trade for a short. If the macro trend is up, I will short that the first and the second time it happens, which is specifically after a significant move down the first two times that the four hour uh, price comes above the four hour 10 EMA, you have a strong statistical likelihood of being able to short it and get out of your trade within, you know, about four, uh, eight to 12 hours in profit, extremely high likelihood without even knowing if it's going to close above or not. It simply typically wicks above twice, sometimes three, but I, I typically don't try the trade a third time because that's when it's about a 50 50 on if it's going to recover or not. So guess what? Since I know the odds, that's what I want you to be staring at so you can determine which of uh, which most most probable scenario is going to play out. So let's take a look. Either you're going to have A, recovery, B, revisit lows, or C, lower lows. Those are the three most likely scenarios, right? So Tim, what you're saying is it's either going to go up, it's going to go down, or going to go sideways. Yeah. That is what I'm saying, but I'm getting ready to show you how to determine a statistical edge of which one of those is going to happen. Okay. <laughs> and honestly, anytime you look at a chart, that's literally what is going to happen. It's either going to go up sideways or down. The key is to determine what you need to be looking at to give you an edge so you can tell which one is going to happen. Right. All right. So, yes, I'm pointing on the obvious, <laughs> but but that's likely what will happen. Right. So within within the option of recovery, you technically have two options. So two options are a recovery that's hot and then it makes a really high lower high and just recovers really fast. Or the recovery is some more like this. Something to that effect. So just know that in recovery, you could come back below the four hour 10 EMA. But the thing is, you likely won't close the candle there. So recovery means once you get above the, the, the red line and close a candle, right? And then also close a candle above the 21 EMA. In a recovery, what you're looking for is when four hour comes back down to retest the four hour 10 EMA, which will happen at some point, you simply don't want to see the four hour close. Can it wick below there? Like it goes, um, so let's say this closes above, the next uh, candle wicks below, but then closes above the yellow. The next one uh, comes way high, closes here. The next candle comes down and tags the red, uh, but actually goes below the red, but closes here, right? Closes right there. And so we can do something like this. Let's draw out the EMA. EMAs. Something like that. So what you're looking for, and actually the red would probably get a higher slope if price went that high. But anyway, 
So what you're looking for is if, when price closes above the yellow, it'll pro it has a strong likelihood of coming back to either touch the red or go below the red, but that doesn't matter. It's the closure. You want it to come back and close above. Even if it's a red candle, it doesn't matter. It just needs to close above the four hour 10 EMA. And in that moment, you know that it's more likely that recovery will happen and the other two options of revisiting lows or making a lower low becomes less likely. Is it a is it a um, is it a blank check where you can just write it and say, hey, I'm longing, I'm free? No, it absolutely isn't. However, it makes the chance of recovery far in your odds much greater than 50%. So then you can put the idea of three and four, which is revisit lows or make lower lows. You could put those on the back burners until a four hour closure, right? So again, that if there, when there's a red candle after a closure above the yellow line, a closure, not a wick, right? Not, not like between, you know, during the candle as it's still counting down. Once it solidifies the closure and the next one happens, you very likely will get a retest down or a wick below, but you want to wait for the closure. That's what's going to give you the edge on determining this, right? However, even before then, if you get a closure above the four hour 10 EMA right then, the odds of recovery do increase. Do you have more than 50% odds? Eh, it's sort of close at that time. I wouldn't start longing at that time. I don't think the odds are great enough. And once you get a, a four hour candle closure above the 21, the odds are even greater, right? And even more important, when you get this cross, do you see how the red crosses above the yellow? When that happens, so this is step three. So, so when you get a closure above the red, it's more, it's, becomes more probable that recovery happens, but you really need your guard up still, right? Because it's not too probable. When you get a four hour candle closure above the, the four hour 21 EMA, you still need your guard up, but you know, you could start getting frisky with it and getting ready to strike some punches. You you know, you don't have to be so, because there's no one in your face pound, pummeling you as there is right now, right? And when you get this cross like this, that's when you can really get frisky with it. Maybe rest your arms for a second, back away from the fighter because the fight has gone away from you just a little bit. You have distance between fighters. You can rest your arms a little bit more because at that point, the probability of recovery, which means not revisiting the lows and not making lower lows, the chance of uh, those two situations happening becomes much less than 50% and the chance of recovery in one way or another, either it's a hot recovery or a recovery that has a, a, a reasonable uh, higher low, um, those two situations become much, much, much more probable, more, way more than 50% after this cross happens. And then you can get frisky with your uh, guard. So you can just see here, let's take this off. Let's take off, um, let's take off price and just look at these crosses. So here it wasn't a guaranteed thing. So it's not perfect, right? However, here it was more probable that the recovery was going to happen than not, but did it work out? No. Here, did price ever come back below here? No, it did not. Here, did price ever come back below whatever low came down here? Um, no, it did not. Let's put on price. No, it did not. It still made a higher low later. So, it, um, and the next time you had a cross, price still didn't come way back down, right? So in all of this means the probabilities last for about two days. So any signal you get on the four hour chart, the shelf life of that is about two to three days, right? So the chance of recovery for the next two to three, let me be very specific. Yeah, I didn't say that earlier. The chance of recovery within the next two to three days is much, much more likely, but then it essentially it expires and then you have to reanalyze the four hour chart. So the shelf life of the four hour chart is typically two to three days. It's sometimes up to five days, but that's about how long that's the, yeah, that, that's the shelf life of these statistics. So if you are um, a returning or new viewer, please flip your phone or get flipped off. Hey, Dan, what does that mean? mean it means literally your phone is horizontal right now flip it vertically hit the like button so i continue making this video and continue making more videos for you and what's going to help me out even more it now that your phone's vertical leave me a comment even if it's a period without the tampon you can do an emoji poop lol you suck or just yell your favorite coin like veracity whatever you want to do leave me a comment it's going to help me continue making videos and hit subscribe make sure you've hit that bell because this is time sensitive crap and if i'm going to help you walk through a more profitable crypto journey you need the bell. It's time sensitive. We're in this together. Let's get it done. Let's dive back in. All right. 
So right now, you know the three most probable scenarios and what to look out for so you can tell when you have an edge on one or the other playing out, right? So, but here I want to show, I want to take a quick moment to flip to theorem. That, like what I'm about to show you is giving me the jeepers and I want to show you why. So, because honestly, folks, I made a uh, recent YouTube video about 50K Bitcoin. It is still on the table. As much as you don't want to accept it, it's on the table. Is it going to happen? I'm not saying that, but it's got a double digit chance of happening, right? Is it 25% likely? And eh, probably not, probably around 10 to 15. But I want to show you why and what is brewing on Ethereum right now. It essentially is saying that the stock to flow model that Plan B has made famous, right? Or he invented, it, I guess, but you know, whatever. Like the famous stock to flow. It's pretty much off the table at this point. I think the stock to flow model, which says a November uh, candle closure, um, the November month candle uh, of 93K closure, I think it's single digits probability at that at this point. And Ethereum is the key to understanding why. Right. So I want to show you that right now. It's really fascinating. Let's dive into this chart. However, it still could happen. It absolutely could happen. All right. But. Here's what's given me the jeepers. So essentially what we're going to be looking at, I'm going to go down to the one hour chart. I have drawn a few trend lines um, that essentially once structure of what I call aggressive trading. And I've covered this before on my channel, but for new viewers, aggressive trading channels, when they form, you don't have any other options. Typically now um, earlier when I made a video where I said, oh, crap, it's breaking out. I actually had this trend line. I didn't have a drawn right. So that's the problem with shapes. Sometimes you got to redraw your lines. But now that you have multiple touch points, it's a pretty solidified line that the the, um, the line is correct now. But um, so I did get a little scare. Or maybe maybe this was the scare. I can't remember. Yeah, because this made the second uh, the, the second uh, point of the trend. All right. So we have an aggressive trading channel and a secondary channel. So when Ethereum does two things together. In the last two years of price history, there are no other options to happen statistically. Could something else happen, right? Is it a 0% chance that something else happens outside of those two, the two options I'm getting ready to show you? No, it's not a 0% chance. However, it has not happened in the last two years, right? That I've backchecked and I've backchecked the last two years and it hasn't happened once. There are only two options, right? So I want to show you it, but and now you're going to see why I think the stock to flow is it, it, it's possible. It could be the first time something else happens in Ethereum in its history. But I think it's single digits probability chance, right? Okay. And even before I show you this, the cool thing about it is this is a special scenario where you can see the lower term time frames. The dominoes of the lower term time frames are like eating domino food, right? Dominoes that topple over, you can make them go ding, 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 right? They fall over, knocks one over, right? So right now I'm actually pretty damn bullish on Ethereum on the weekly scale. But this right here, what's happening in the chart, even though I know you can't see the chart, what's happening on Ethereum is like the dominoes of the one hour chart, the two hour chart, the four hour chart. Typically, when they haven't eaten domino food, they're light. So the one hour can fall into the two hour. The two hour falls into the four hour. The fall, four hour falls into the daily and the daily just sways. But then it knocks all those back and the other go. Dunk, 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 and then the trend continues up or trend continues down if that's the direction, right? The trend but right now, the trends up. But right now, what's the, uh, brewing in Ethereum is it's essentially domino food for the one hour, two hour and four hour chart. It looks like they have enough food to knock the daily down so that the trend either pauses. I'm not saying trend reverse. I don't think we're going to go into a bear market, but it looks like the, the trend will pause. I think we're good. It looks like consolidation is going to happen in November. I don't think this is going to close over 72K. So let's dive in and show why. So this is a cool scenario where you can see in, in front of your eyes how the short term time frames might be really affecting the larger time frames, right? Because they usually don't have the power to affect the daily and the weekly. But here we go. All right. So I'm on the one hour chart. And again, aggressive trading channel, secondary trading channel. Here are the two things that happen that only give two possibilities throughout the history of Ethereum. I guess there is a third possibility that something new for the first time happens, right? But two um, uh, possibilities within the all price history of Ethereum is in these aggressive trading channels, when you both fall out and make a non higher high, right? So you fall out of the lower, the lower uh, uh, secondary channel and make a non higher high. Then your two options in the whole history of Ethereum is you consolidate 
or you go down and then consolidate before resuming. There are no other reiterations. Could something happen that's different than that for the first time ever? Absolutely. And honestly, the weekly is kind of suggesting that, but since it's never happened before, I think it's more probable that the lower term time frames are going to make a pause on the weekly and the daily bullish time frame. It, it looks like that. So, so let's go back and check the other. So again, what's happening is we fell out, price fell out of the trading channel. You made a non higher high. Now you have two options. Let me show you how those options played out previous in previous price history. So, and again, these uh, aggressive trading channels don't happen all too often. Um, um in this way so here you go here's another set back in july of this year aggressive trading channel secondary trading channel you fell um you fell out so ethereum fell out of the uh secondary trading channel made a non so see this closure see this uh let's zoom way in see this candle closure here it's below those candle closures so it's a non higher high so that's the two scenarios. Now you only have two options per per the history of Ethereum. Either you consolidate or you go down, then consolidate. Typically, it doesn't. Uh, th so aggressive trading channels don't indicate trend reversal. So I haven't ever seen that happen. But the trend will continue. But it's how it continues. So here, look, look how long this consolidated. Watch from the time it fell out to the time it really started moving. That's 16 days. How much time do we have left in the week? Or I mean, in the month. Right. About like 21 days. So that means there's no, like even in the better case, actually this one did go down first, right? But that means 93K Bitcoin, you know, assuming that Bitcoin isn't going to fly without Ethereum, which I, it's a pretty damn safe assumption. Is it a guarantee? No. But if that happened, Bitcoin dominance probably would go to 60. It would, uh, but it's just not likely. It's not likely to happen, right? So if Ethereum moves sideways for even a week, that, that, how is Bitcoin going to go to 93K? It's not going to start flying without it. Bitcoin needs to start moving now. The month is half over. We're sitting at like 64K. You need 30K more halfway through the month. And Ethereum's getting ready to consolidate, like in an, a very statistically likely scenario. So let's go find some more aggressive uh, trading channels. Here you go. Aggressive. So these are the aggressive trading channel. Primary, secondary channel. Okay. You fell out. So let's zoom in. Watch. You... Price fell out, fell out of it, made a non-higher high. It went down first, then consolidated. Well, how long did it consolidate? I will say consolidation lasted until a break above here, a full break. So that would be about this point here. So from the point it fell out, only six days, but then fake out it actually came back down so uh, you actually got to go to here this is just like a fake out within consolidate like it's a one big massive consolidation look it came right back down to that line which means if that happens 13 days later bitcoin's not going to 93k that's 13 days later of consolidation right and then it continued consolidate and then it finally moved up right but look at that that's 13 days. There is no 13 days for 93K Bitcoin. That can't happen. But that's what I'm telling you. That's all that's ever happened. And it's happening again. So what is the most likely scenario? That 93K Bitcoin this month ain't going to happen. Like this month, I, 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 think, um, I think that 72K Bitcoin could happen. Maybe even 82 if you're getting really um, ambitious. But... I seriously think that um, stock to flow model will be broken this month and the sign for that. So Bitcoin, honestly, it could race up to 93K within 15 days based on its posturing. Now it could, but not with Ethereum doing this. I really, really don't think so. Leave me a comment if you haven't already. If you didn't leave an emoji poop or yell, try ass, right? So leave me a quick comment. Let me know what you think about that per the signal on Ethereum and how it's going to affect Bitcoin. And hey, new viewers, check this out. Check this out. New people. Look at this. These two videos right here, they're in my playlist that only has three videos in it called the most important videos I've ever made. So I'm not one of those people that says urgent Bitcoin, but everything's urgent. I'm not doing that. So the two videos popping up now or that are going to pop up soon um, here on the screen, watch those. It can greatly, greatly add to the level of profitability that you're going to experience throughout your crypto journey to the end of this bull run. Hit like. New folks, hit subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, make sure the bell is hit because this is time sensitive. I'm here to help you walk through more crypto, more, a more crypto journey. What, what does that even mean, Tim? A more profitable crypto journey. We are in this together. Let's get this crypto. Y'all just got Timified.